No, fiberglass fenders. Fiberglass fenders. Uh -huh. Steel running boys. Hey viewers, this morning I painted this board for an, a horse carriage, primered the body, and put the doors on to the 34 yesterday. The new subframe connectors for the 69 Plymouth Roadrunner came in from uh, XV Motorsports in Irvington, New York. But these are supposedly cut to fit the floor without any floor modification. In addition to the subframe connectors, we put the belt moldings on for the glass on the interior parts. This goes along the top of both doors and then this piece over here goes in the back seat. You can see how you replicate the factory staples. I painted and put the windshield locators in this morning as well as painting the wiper blade motor cover that had originally had a bunch of gold overspray on it and I didn't want to see it when I looked through the vents of the cowl that go along the hood here. We're also painting the steering wheel column. These are all the clips that hold the windshield reveal molding. You can see I've got, uh, this is for the lower with brand new screws. These go along the pillars right here and hold the, the chrome trim over the glass. The glass is over here. We have to wait to install that because the dash has to go together before the windshield goes in. Of course we know that the dash is painted, the new pads in. Randy from uh, Gage Works up in Phoenix still has my gauges and Chuck Hawk's Performance Center is building the air box. So once I get the air box into the car I'll be able to start putting my dash together. Hey! and you're back to muscle cars and hot rods. Let's see, this morning I took you out to the car show on 4th Avenue, the Street Rod Association uh, hot rod show. And we're back here at Photo Finish, and I'm gonna start blocking on the Mustang. We've got a brand new hood back here for you, and I'll show you what's going on. Okay, here we are. We've got the, the uh, used hood and new bumper for the Mustang. You'll notice that I use only Ford parts. You'll never see me put an aftermarket, you know, like a cheap aftermarket body part on one of my cars. I've got the deck lid all masked off and ready to 150 block. Seems how the hood and the deck lid are made of composite, I'll be blocking and priming them at the same time so that I can use a flex additive in my primer. Now a lot of people would say, hey Jeff, why are you blocking this car down? It's a newer vehicle and really nice shape. Why don't you just sand it down and paint it? And the truth of the matter is, yeah, it is a really nice car. But a car is never as straight as it looks once you put a block to it. You can see I'm shiny here. I've got a shiny spot here and some low spots throughout it. It's not a perfect flat piece. It's got a little bit of wave to it. I'll take a long block, the longest block I can use on the panel, and I'll block it out and I'll try to even out the low spots to the rest of the panel as I'm going. Nine out of 10 cars, or I should say people, would have been fine with the car the way this was, but not me. I want to make it that one step nicer. It's not going to be perfect, it's going to be nicer than most, and you're going to notice it. Now while blocking a car can give you the added advantage of having a straighter panel, it can also give you a disadvantage in that you're adding material and mill thickness to that finish. 
and the disadvantage is there that it's more susceptible to rock chips and peeling. So when you sand and block it, get that substrate down, get it out of there, sand as much as you possibly can off that surface.